In your interactions with uh, President Trump, has there been anything that surprised you? It may be surprising to some that he's, he's, he's authentic uh, in that the person he is on camera in public is very true to the person he is in, in private. So it's, you know, there's, there's a, a consistency there that, that is, you know, one can, one can work with. So we heard you like Levat 50. Look at this. We, yeah. we brought it just for you. We know it's the middle of the work day, so you can't <laughs> yeah, drink. I won't drink too much. You, but I, I, will, I will cheers. Oh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. There we go. <laughs> Let's sip. And skim. Labor Day is coming up. It is a holiday celebrated by the US and Canada. It's a holiday that was created to honor and celebrate workers. We want to touch on a few issues that are facing workers today. So let's get into it. You've gotten a lot of accolades for your cabinet. It's really diverse. You have an equal number of men and women. That's a huge accomplishment. Um, but let's talk about the wage gap and what you're doing to combat that. It's nominally better than it is in the US. That's not saying much. <laughs> And actually, that's one of the one of the things when when we'd first uh, come forward with a with a gender par parity uh, cabinet, everyone said, "Oh, you know, Canada's leading on 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 women's issues." I said, "Actually, we're really." far below where we'd like to be on, on wage equity and pay equity. And there's a lot to do. I mean, we're bringing in um, uh, pay equity legislation to make sure that there's uh, equal pay for work of equal value. Uh, we'll be doing that next year. Uh, but in the meantime, we're looking at a lot of, a lot of things that we also needed to do. Moving forward on uh, child care, on maternal leave uh, issues, uh, bringing forward a Canada Child Benefit, which is uh, monthly tax-free checks to families for their kids, to low-income, middle-income families, uh, to support with the cost of, of raising their, their, their children. And we know that you know, increased share of the burden always falls to women in terms of that. So it's about helping people have the options and choices, uh, whether it's good childcare or, or what, uh, to be able to get into the workforce and make those choices. But there's a lot more work to do and, and we're, uh, we're working on it. So I want to move on to touch on minimum wage. There's a big push by Canadians to, uh, by some Canadians to move minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. And your administration has said, we're not gonna touch this just yet. Why? A couple of reasons. One's really practical. The federal government only uh, handles minimum wage for uh, federally regulated industries uh, like airlines and banks and telecommunications where there's not a lot of minimum wage workers. Uh, on the provincial side, we have a number of provinces who are going to move towards the $15, and we're very interested in, in, in watching how that works. And it's not something we're close to, but it's not something we're moving on right now, no. So you've gotten a lot of criticism for being an advocate against global warming, but then also a champion of oil pipelines uh, running through Canada and the U.S. that create jobs. How do you focus on job creation while also being environmentally conscious? That's the big question. I mean, it's, it's very easy politically to pick one side of the equation and say, you know, we're for the environment uh, and, you know, forget about development, or uh, we're going to you know, focus on the economy and ignore the environment. Well, the fact is most people get it. You can't build a strong economy for the future unless you are protecting the environment. And you can't actually protect the environment unless people are comfortable that they're gonna have food on their table you know, to feed their kids the next week and the next year. So we need to be smart about doing that all together. And that means, yes, moving towards a lower carbon economy, uh, moving uh, away from our dependency on fossil fuels, but that's not gonna happen overnight. So if we are still gonna be dependent on you know, driving cars and, and oil and gas, what is is the most responsible way to move uh, that oil and gas. Certainly uh, trucks or rail uh, have caused terrible accidents. Pipelines can be done in a safer way. Now people are worried about spills and I get that. That's why we've invested billions of dollars in an oceans protection plan that will have better responses, better protections. And doing both of those things at the same time is actually what most people expect. Listen, Think about the long term, protect us both in terms of our jobs and uh, the valuable natural world we live in, uh, and they'll be reassured. And people have been good with that. NAFTA is a North American Free Trade Agreement. It uh, started in the late 80s as the Canada-US uh, Trade Agreement, and then Mexico joined in in the early 90s. Uh, and it's been, uh, basically when you reduce 
barriers to trade, uh, consumers get better prices on a wider range of goods, uh, and companies have to get more competitive to succeed in larger markets. Uh, so it's something that creates innovation, creates opportunity. President Trump has been very vocal about this. Um, talking about the need to renegotiate, possibly even potentially pulling out of the deal. Um, you've at times talked about um, possibly modernizing it. So where are their disagreements? First of all, NAFTA is a, a, a deal that's been around for over two decades and it's been updated a dozen times over this. So there's nothing huge about, about making sure that it keeps up with the times, whether we're talking about the digital economy, whether we're talking about uh, you know environmental standards and things like that. There's a lot that we know now that we didn't know 25 years ago that, that should be in it and we're very happy to do that. The other piece that is really important to me um, is making sure that, uh, and it's actually important to the American administration because you know, President Trump got elected on it, how to make sure that people who are worried about their jobs, about their future, who feel that growth hasn't worked for them, uh, become more confident about their ability to support their family and for their kids to get jobs in the future decades. So that's, that's a reflection on how do we go at that core anxiety that so many people feel. And I think that trade is a very powerful mechanism to do that because it does create growth. We just have to make sure that that growth is shared more equitably than it has been in the past, where it tends to accrue to a very small proportion of the population. And that's where some of the things we've done, whether it's lowering taxes on the middle class and raising them on the wealthiest 1%, or bringing in a, a means-tested uh, child uh, benefit, um, is making a difference, but there's also things we can do around NAFTA, uh, looking at labor mobility, looking at uh, labor labor standards and costs and expectations. A lot of uh, questions about Mexican wage uh, wages and how uh, there are jobs, you know, flowing to different places across NAFTA that that we can address by improving outcomes for workers and improving confidence for people in the middle class. I don't think we're far apart on what we want out of it. What everyone wants is you know, better opportunities for uh, our citizens and our countries. Uh, I think some of the policy prescriptions between uh, President Trump and myself are, are a, little, a little divergent. Uh, but I know if we stay focused on outcomes, I mean, NAFTA has created millions of good jobs uh, for the middle class on both sides of the border over the past 25 years. Uh, there's uh, a lot more that we can do, and, and we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're responding to some of the current pressures and challenges. We should be you know, building something strong and taking on the world with it instead of you know, quibbling over, over you know, small issues uh, that, that tend to get magnified. I don't think we're that far apart on a lot of things and, and we're gonna have uh, good negotiations. We know that sometimes things get tricky with, with relationships with neighbors. If you could change President Trump's mind about one issue, what would it be? That's a fun thought experiment to, 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 to yeah. engage in uh, around a dinner table, <laughs> but as as a prime minister, my job is not to try and influence or opine on what a leader of a different country should be doing. My job is to do the best possible job for my country, and I wouldn't want someone else telling me what I should be doing in Canada and telling me what I should do. I expect him to be uh, standing up for what's in the best interests of his citizens, and I'm gonna work hard to stand up for the best interests of, of my citizens. And I know enough about how North America and how the world works to know that us both doing that well uh, can be tremendously beneficial to uh, both of our countries. In your interactions with uh, President Trump, has there been anything that surprised you? It may be surprising to some that he's, he's, he's authentic uh, in that the person he is on camera in public is very true to the person he is in, in private. So it's, you know, there's, there's a, a consistency there that, that is, you know, one, can, one can work with. Are you wearing any interesting socks today? <laughs> yes, I'm wearing oh, these are good. Uh, oh, West, these are good. West Coast Haida socks. Yeah. Oh, I like 
So, you, uh, uh, Pacific Northwest uh, Native Did you ever think your art. socks would be a thing? You, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny that it has become a bit yeah. of a thing. I mean, I, I'm not someone who naturally wears uh, suits and ties. Uh -huh. It's not something that I'm happy with. Yeah. Give me jeans and we a t-shirt. We appreciated the yeah. casual look today. Well, so to be able to find a way to express myself uh, w without being you know, zany novelty yeah. ties uh, was important. I said, well, why don't I just wear you know, cool socks? A lot of people are doing that, so, so it's, I was it's a good glad one. to do it. How would you like to express yourself with some skin socks? I would it's love to express with excellent skin socks. There we, we go. We think they will look good in, in, yeah. in your office. Thank you. Thank you. Nice My pleasure.